Do you want some adventure? Great, because today we're going to explore. Well, actually we're going to do exploratory analysis with that jokes apart. Is one of the main skills in the data science toolbox. So let's go back to our data set. Remember this Excel spreadsheet. So we have different sheets and different columns. So let's go back and summarize what we did in the last video. I'm going to import from Excel, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm going to call this DF for the sake of convenience. I'm going to choose the second spreadsheet and I'm going to skip all, almost all the columns to make things simple. So I'm going to skip this one, uh, this one, candidate, Donald Trump, uh, okay. And that's all, okay. So again, let's import this. And now we have this data set. I have created a new column from the last time, which is called random, which is basically a random number, which it takes the value zero and one. Okay, so first things, let's take a look at the data frame, strdf. And the main message of this video is the following. The strings are almost useless labels. So when, whenever you find a string, you have to decide, is this something that is interesting for me to read, but it's not going to enter into analysis? If the answer is yes, then this is not a string, this is a factor. And factors are categorical variables. Okay, so you can print this slide. Because again, as I was saying, this is the most important message of this video. So let's go back to our data set. So here we have a state, which is a character. And as I was saying, this is not a string. Actually, this is something that I want to use in my, in my analysis. So I'm going to convert, I'm going to take the content of a state abbreviation, and I'm going to convert this to a factor. Remember, factor is the same as categorical variable. DF state abbreviation. Again, if we run strdf now we have that the straight abbreviation is a factor with 48 levels great let's do the same with party uh, republican and democrat is not a string it's something that is important for my analysis so again i'm going to take party and I'm, I'm going to say that this is a factor so remember that this converts from whatever to factor so df party Okay, so str, let's say D, uh, df. Again, we have two levels, Democrat and Republican, so good. And now let's assume that, as I was saying, that random is not a number between zero and one, that, that means something. Like, I don't know, it could mean I don't know, that the candidate is female or male, okay? And I'm going to use this function, if else, if you want to know what is this about, remember, click F1 and then you can read about that. But the syntax is very simple. You have some condition and then comma, and then what happens if this condition is fulfilled and what happens if it don't. So I'm going to say, if random is zero, then I'm going to assume that the candidate is male, and if not, that is female. Okay, this is completely made up, okay, but it's just for the sake of illustration. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. So now I'm going to create a new column, remember the last video, and I'm going to call this sex, uh, lowercase. So again, let's str df. And as you can see here, we have now a new column, a new variable which is called sex, and this is a character, okay? And this is not what we want to do because again, the strings are only for reading or for understanding your data set, but not for analysis. So again, we could repeat this command, but here we could say as factor, the outcome of this command, or we could say directly that the new df.sex is as factor of the old df.sex, okay? And now again, if we run str, now we have the proper things. Okay, so this is kind of exploratory analysis. Now we have factors and numbers and we don't care about strings, okay? So the, f the next thing that we're going to do is start with, with some plotting, actually, the, the human brain is made for visual things, so we can recognize patterns in clouds and faces. So I think plotting is the, one of the most useful things that we can do now. So let's, let's introduce one of the most interesting commands in R, which is plot. Actually, plot is an alias, because if you plot here a data frame, it does something different than if you put here a vector, for instance, that that's x, or if you put a numeric vector like votes, 
Okay, so play around with that. So let's start with boats. And as you can see here, now this panel changes from help to plots. Let's magnify this a little bit. And you see an index here from zero to the number of rows. And then this is the number of boats. Okay, and as you can see here, we have tons of mm, tons of numbers here and a few of them reach up to more than half a million votes okay so this is one way to represent a numerical value we could do another thing to create a histogram or a frequency diagram again let's take a number and as you can see here as i was saying this is a kind of pareto law in which most of the of the states have a few votes and a few of the states have a huge number of votes okay counties in this case okay you cannot see anything here Actually, if you go back to this plot, you can see that this is not very representative. So one thing that you can do in this exploratory phase is transform your data set. So whenever you have histograms like this, let's go back, click in this arrow. Uh, if you have this self distribution, you can try to transform that. And I'm going to change this to the, the, the logarithmic scale of the number of votes. Why the log 10? Because for instance, if you have a million and and you calculate log 10 this is going to to tell you the number of zeros that you have there so a million has six zeros so log 10 gives you a, a good idea about the number of zeros of the number okay so now if we plot this you can see that now everything is more or less our, uh, distributed around let's say 2.5 okay so this uh, i don't understand this graph but, but it looks much better than the older one and if we run a histogram of the log 10 of the f votes now this looks kind of a gaussian distribution a normal distribution as you can see here the mean is around three or two point something and we don't see much beyond six zero so th we don't actually have any county with more than a million votes so this is exploratory analysis what if now instead of plotting a numerical value uh, value we plot a categorical one Okay, let's try. So plot df sex. Okay, and now plot is really smart and it knows that this is a factor and instead of plotting a number, it actually calculates the number of rows containing female and the number of male. As this was a random number that I created with Excel. Actually, you can see the function here. This is a random number between zero and one. Here, more or less, you have 50-50% each of them okay another thing that you can do with categorical variables which is not plotting is use the function table so if you write table and then sex it tells you the number of votes uh, sorry the, the number of rows with a, with a factor of female and the number with male you can do actually the same with the party and as you can see in this data set the republicans have more more counties in which they won than the Democrats. And actually you can combine uh, two of them. So let's do a two entry table with party and sex. So you can see that, okay, again, this is made up, but you have counties with, uh, I don't know, 4,614 female Democrats and so on and so forth. Okay, you can do this, for instance, with party and state abbreviation and as we have 48 states this table is not so easy to see but you can see that in arkansas you have 80 democrat counties and 200 republican counties and if we go to california then we have more or less the same if we go to let's say massachusetts i think it's this one we have again more republicans than democrat but it's more balanced and so on and so forth okay so this is another way to do exploratory analysis and the last thing that i want to cover here Again, let's type str, see that we have factors and so on and so forth. But the other thing that I want to explore here is a command which is really handy. And it's called pairs. Pairs actually is a way to plot information in which you plot all the variables two by two. So let me show you this function that is called pairs. And I'm going to plot, for making these things quicker, just the first thousand elements and then I'm going to remove the fourth column which is that random column that I don't really interested on so Paris is really amazing because it gives you all all the variables the state abbreviation party votes and sex and then you can see what's 
the, the scatter plot of one versus the other. Okay, state abbreviation versus party, or for instance, the number of votes versus the state abbreviation, and so on and so forth. Okay, there are more sophisticated ways to do this pairs, and actually, I like a library which is a psychology library, which is called Psych. Like that has a pairs, a, a pairs function. It's called pairs panels, which is really interesting. So let's load the library and let's run these pairs panels, and it's more or less the same. But it gives you histograms in the diagonal. It gives you the correlation. So basically, as you can see here, all the variables are uncorrelated with each other. So this correlation, this is R squared. If you, uh, we will talk about that later. But if this is close to 1 or minus 1, the correlation is strong. If this is close to 0, the correlation is weak. And it gives you a better idea of what is happening in this data set. And that's all for today.